A beam engine is a type of steam engine where a pivoted overhead beam is used to apply the force from a vertical piston to a vertical connecting rod. This configuration, with the engine directly driving a pump, was first used by Thomas Newcomen around 1705 to remove water from mines in Cornwall. The efficiency of the engines was improved by engineers including James Watt, who added a separate condenser, Jonathan Hornblower and Arthur Wolfe, who compounded the cylinders, and William McNaught, who devised a method of compounding an existing engine. Beam engines were first used to pump water out of mines or into canals, but could be used to pump water to supplement the flow for a waterwheel powering a mill. The rotative beam engine is a later design of beam engine where the connecting rod drives a flywheel, by means of a crank or, historically, by means of a sun and planet gear. These beam engines could be used to directly power the line shafting in a mill. They also could be used to power steam ships. History The first beam engines were water-powered, and used to pump water from mines. A preserved example may be seen at the Straight Steps Lead Mine in Wanlock Head in Scotland. Beam engines were extensively used to power pumps on the English canal system when it was expanded by means of locks early in the Industrial Revolution, and also to drain water from mines in the same period, and as winding engines. The first steam-related beam engine was developed by Thomas Newcomen. This was not, strictly speaking, steam-powered, as the steam introduced below the piston was condensed to create a partial vacuum thus allowing atmospheric pressure to push down the piston. It was therefore called an atmospheric engine. The Newcomen atmospheric engine was adopted by many mines in Cornwall and elsewhere, but it was relatively inefficient and consumed a large quantity of fuel. The engine was improved by John Smeaton but James Watt resolved the main inefficiencies of the Newcomen engine in his Watt steam engine by the addition of a separate condenser, thus allowing the cylinder to remain hot. Technically this was still an atmospheric engine until under subsequent patents he enclosed the upper part of the cylinder, introducing steam to also push the piston down. This made it a true steam engine and arguably confirms him as the inventor of the steam engine. He also patented the centrifugal governor and the parallel motion, the latter allowed the replacement of chains round an arch head and thus allowed its use as a rotative engine. His patents remained in place until the start of the 19th century and some say that this held back development. However, in reality development had been ongoing by others and at the end of the patent period there was an explosion of new ideas and improvements. Watt's beam engines were used commercially in much larger numbers and many continued to run for 100 years or more. Watt held patents on key aspects of his engine's design, but his rotative engine was equally restricted by James Picard's patent of the simple crank. The beam engine went on to be considerably improved and enlarged in the tin and copper rich areas of South West England, which enabled the draining of the deep mines that existed there. Consequently, the Cornish beam engines became world famous, as they remain among the most massive beam engines ever constructed. Because of the number of patents on various parts of the engines and the consequences of patent infringements, examples exist of beam engines with no maker's name on any of the parts Holycomb Steam Collection. <laughs> <laughs> Rotative beam engines In a rotative beam engine, the piston is mounted vertically, and the piston rod drives the beam as before. A connecting rod from the other end of the beam, rather than driving a pump rod, now drives a flywheel. Early Watt engines used Watt's patent sun and planet gear, rather than a simple crank, as use of the latter was protected by a patent owned by James Picard. Once the patent had expired, the simple crank was employed universally. Once rotary motion had been achieved a drive belt could be attached beside the flywheel. 
This transmitted the power to other drive shafts and from these other belts could then be attached to power a variety of static machinery e.g. threshing, grinding or milling machines. <laughs> Marine beam engines The first steam-powered ships used variants of the rotative beam engine. These marine steam engines, known as side lever, grasshopper, crosshead, or walking beam, among others, all varied from the original land-based machines by locating the beam or beams in different positions to take up less room on board ship. Media related to rotative beam engines at Wikimedia Commons Topic: Compounding Compounding involves two or more cylinders, low-pressure steam from the first, high-pressure, cylinder is passed to the second cylinder where it expands further and provides more drive. This is the compound effect, the waste steam from this can produce further work if it is then passed into a condenser in the normal way. The first experiment with compounding was conducted by Jonathan Hornblower, who took out a patent in 1781. His first engine was installed at Tincroft Mine, Cornwall. It had two cylinders, one 21-inch diameter with 6-foot stroke and one 27-inch diameter with 8-foot stroke, placed alongside each other at one end of the beam. The early engines showed little performance gain, the steam pressure was too low, interconnecting pipes were of small diameter and the condenser ineffective. At this time, the laws of thermodynamics were not adequately understood, particularly the concept of absolute zero. Engineers such as Arthur Wolfe were trying to tackle an engineering problem with an imperfect understanding of the physics. In particular, their valve gear was cutting in at the wrong position in the stroke, not allowing for expansive working in the cylinder. Successful Wolf compound engines were produced in 1814, for the Wheel Abraham Copper Mine and the Wheel Vor Tin Mine. Topic McNaught engines William McNaught patented a compound beam engine in 1845. On a beam engine of the standard Bolton and Watt design he placed a high-pressure cylinder, on the opposite side of the beam to the existing single cylinder, where the water pump was normally fitted. This had two important effects, it massively reduced the pressure on the beam, and the connecting steam pipe, being long, acted as an expansive receiver, the element missing in the Wolf design. This modification could be made retrospectively, and engines so modified were said to be McNaughted. The advantages of a compound engine were not significant at pressures under 60 pounds per square inch (410 kilopascals), but showed at over 100 psi (690 kilopascals). Topic: Preserved beam engines. Abbey Pumping Station, Leicester, England, houses four Wolf compound rotative beam engines built by Gimson and Company, Leicester. Bolton Steam Museum, Bolton, England, includes several rotative beam engines originally used to drive mills. Clay Mills Pumping Station, Burton on Trent, Staffordshire, England, four Wolf compound rotative beam pumping engines, five Lancashire boilers, over 30 auxiliary engines on the site, including the oldest working steam-driven dynamo in the country. Cold Harbor Mill, Ufcom, Devon, 1867 Kitto and Brotherhood beam engine plus Pollitt and Wigzel 300 horsepower cross compound engine. In steam, most bank holidays driving the rope race, together with other smaller machines. Coultershaw beam pump, West Sussex, England, preserved water powered beam engine from 1782. Crofton Pumping Station, Great Bedwin, England, two engines, including the oldest working Cornish engine in its original location in the world, 1812. Crossness Pumping Station, Abbey Wood, London, England, set of four rotative beam engines, the largest surviving working examples. Dogdyke engine, Tattershall, Lincolnshire, drainage engine and scoop wheel, steamed summer weekends. 
Eastney Beam Engine House Portsmouth, England, contains two rotative beam engines for sewage pumping, dating from 1887. Elsa Car, Elsa Car, South Yorkshire, England, the only surviving Newcomen engine in the world to have remained in its original location, 1795. Goulburn Waterworks, Goulburn, NSW, Australia, Appleby Brothers Beam Engine 1883-120 HP in working order, still in the original pump house building. Graysbrick Beam Engine, a large pumping Bolton and Watt designed with a 42-inch (1.1 bore on static display on the Dartmouth roundabout on the A38M in Birmingham, England. Hollycombe Steam Collection, Liphook, Hampshire, England, a small, approximately five horsepower working rotative beam engine dating from approximately 1850, used to power farm machinery with a water wheel attached to supplement the power. Levant Mine and Beam Engine Trewellard, Pendine, England, a working beam engine on a National Trust property in West Cornwall, England Markfield Beam Engine Tottenham, London, England, a compound, rotative engine. Museum de Crucius, Crucius the Netherlands the eight-beamed engine at Crucius is thought to be the largest steam engine ever built Newcomen Memorial Engine Dartmouth, Devon, dating from about 1725. Hydraulic mechanism added for demonstration purposes. Nottingham Industrial Museum, Nottingham, England. The steam gallery contains an impressive Baseford beam engine, one of a pair of engines built in 1858 by R. W. Hawthorne in Newcastle upon Tyne. It was installed at Baseford pumping station to lift water 110 feet (34 meters) from the sandstone below to supply fresh water to the city of Nottingham. The engine was replaced in 1965 and was removed to the purpose-built steam gallery where it was first fired in 1975. Pinchbeck engine Spalding, Lincolnshire statically preserved a frame engine. Poldark mine Trenere, Cornwall Harvey of Hale Cornish beam engine from Bunny Tin Mine and later Greensplat China clay pit dating from about 1850. Hydraulic mechanism added for demonstration purposes. Last to have worked commercially in Cornwall to December 1959, moved to Poldark in 1972. Ryhope Engines Museum Ryhope, England, twin rotative beam engines, built 1868. Smethwick engine Smethwick, Birmingham, England oldest working steam engine in the world 1779. Streatham Old Engine, Streatham, Cambridgeshire, statically preserved engine and scoop wheel. Strumpshaw Steam Museum, Strumpshaw, England, features a now compressed air-powered former beam engine from Addington. Tees Cottage Pumping Station, Darlington, England, a working rotative two-cylinder Wolf compound engine designed by Glenfield and Kennedy of Kilmarnock and built by Teesdale Brothers under T and C Hawksley, civil engineers, London. The Bolton and Watt rotative beam engine, Sun and Planet type, at the National Museum of Scotland, 1786. Occasional working by pneumatics the Caprington Colliery Newcomen engine at the National Museum of Scotland. Occasional working on pneumatics. The Henry Ford Museum Dearborn, Michigan, U.S. Fairbottom Bobs, a Newcomen engine of the 1760s. The London Museum of Water and Steam Brentford, London, England, five Cornish engines in original location of which four are operational, together with two operational rotative beam engines in museum, including the largest working Cornish engine in the world with a 90-inch mm cylinder. The Western Springs Water Works, Auckland, New Zealand, 1877 double wolf compound engine. In original location, restored in working order with Transport and Technology Museum built around it. The restoration of the pump house and original engineer's cottage was awarded with the 2009 Award of Merit from UNESCO's Asia Pacific Heritage Awards for Culture Heritage Conservation Program. See also Bolton and Watt
Cataract beam engine Cornish engine Gimson and Company Man engine Marine steam engine Mining in Cornwall Preston Grange Industrial Heritage Museum Pump jack Six column beam engine Stationary engine Arthur Wolfe